Zoom in, hold, zoom out again. It looks all right, but I'm not too sure about the animation. So let's pick a different one and try again. Zoom in, hold, and then zoom out. That one looked a little bit better. And how easy was that? No messing around with keyframes, no zooms, nothing. It's all done in a pre-made generator or effect, which we created in Fusion. And that's what we're gonna do in this video today. Now this one is limited to those on DaVinci Resolve 17, because we're gonna be using a brand new feature called the Animation Curve. Now the Animation Curve is an awesome new addition to Fusion that allows you to really quickly and easily animate things within Fusion without messing around with keyframes and splines. It also gives you the ability to then amend the animation afterwards to change the look of the thing that you've created. And it's gonna make creating things like titles, transitions, call outs, and effects like this way easier. And it's gonna give people the ability to change the animation from directly within the edit tab without messing about. It has loads and loads of potential. Now, if you don't wanna actually know how it's made, you just wanna download the Zoom and start using it, check in the description, there's a link, you can go and download it now, and then just use the chapters to find the point where I'll show you how to install it and how to use it. But if you do wanna see how it all works and you wanna learn something about the animation curves, stick around, because we're gonna jump straight into DaVinci Resolve and take a look. So here we are within DaVinci Resolve and we're currently on the Edit tab. Now I've got this clip on my timeline, it doesn't matter what clip it is, anything you like, we're just using it as a reference to actually build our Fusion composition. So give the clip a click and then jump straight into the Fusion tab. And then all we're going to do from here, in this little shortcut menu underneath the preview window, grab this one, which is your transform node, and just drag it onto the line so that it turns yellow and blue, and then release. So we've added the transform node there. Give it a click, and then open up the inspector in the top right hand corner. And it's the size we want to work with, because we want to increase the size, which will give us a bit of a zoom, and then decrease it at the end to give us that nice zoom in, zoom out. So what we need to do, underneath the preview window, you've got this little timeline. Just drag the little red line all the way over to the very far left, so you're on zero, and then just add a keyframe. You don't need to change anything, literally just add a keyframe because we just need a keyframe to exist. Right click on the word size, go to insert, and then you've got animated curves. Give that a click. Once done, this little modifiers button will become available, so give that a click. Now, in a nutshell, this modifies, this animated curves, allows us to edit that property, in our case, the size, using a curve. So we don't need to do it manually within the splines or mess around with keyframes. And it's just a really nice way of curving animation so it looks nicer that you can also then change in the future as you need to on the Edit tab. If I just demonstrate, I'm gonna come here where it says Input. And if I just grab that, move it up and down, we can change size by amending the input. So what we want to do, come down to zero, and then in the input, change that from one to zero. And that'll make it so basically it doesn't exist because the size is zero. Then use our little playhead, and what we want to do is double your frame rate. So I shoot at 25 frames per second. So I want my animation to take one second, which would mean 25 frames. But you actually need to double it for this, and I'll explain why shortly. So rather than being on 25, I'm gonna jump straight up to 50. If you shoot at 24, you'd obviously go to 48, 30, go to 60, that sort of thing. And then once you're at 50, in the inspector, in the input, just enter one. And now if we play that back, we've got a zoom in from zero to one, and it's completely linear like so. So we're changing that size, but using this animation curve. And then in the curve, you've got linear, and now we can change that to easing. And then we've got these in and outs. So this is where it starts to become interesting and you can start to see the potential. So at the minute we've got none, but if we just choose, let's choose Expo, and then hit play again. It's doing the same thing, but as you can see, the animated curve is totally different. We have a different animation. So let's go with something like, let's go with back. We'll change that on both. And now we've got this nice little sort of bounce of back animation, and we can change it without having to mess around with the splines, which is really cool. Now at the moment, it just happens at the beginning, stays where it is, until the end, so it doesn't really work. But underneath there, you've got this mirror tick box. So if we tick that, we've still got this animation at the beginning, but if we skip through our timeline and hit play, it does the reverse at the end. What you'll also notice is it's now sped up a little bit. So when you tick mirror, what it does is takes the entire timeline, squishes it into half of the timeline, and then just plays it backwards at the end. So now that animation, which we set to be 
50 frames will now be completed in 25. So that's why we doubled it at the beginning. So now we've got this one second animation in. Hopefully that makes sense. It seems fiddly, but honestly, it's not too bad. If you're using the mirror, you just double the length of time when you set in the keyframes and job done. Now, obviously this isn't what we want. We don't want it to go from a zero to a one like that. We want it to go from one to say 1.2 or 1.3. So it just zooms in a little bit. Underneath all this, you've got scaling. So you can change the scaling of the input. So in the offset, change that to one. And now what's gonna happen is rather than going from zero to one, it's gonna go from one to two. So it's starting to look a little bit more like it. But let's say that's too zoomed in. We don't wanna be that close. Well, then you can change the scale. So let's change that to about 0.3. So now it's going from one to 1.3 and it's using a little animation curve here. And at the end, it'll go back out again. And that's it. So we've created this animation using the curves, which is really cool and it works really well. And what we can then do is turn that into a macro so we can access all of these settings from within the edit tab. So we've got one little feature which we can amend to look different whenever we want to use it. So to do that, all we're gonna do on this transform node, right click, go to macro, go to create macro, and then you get this little pop-up. Now, if you've never created a macro before, all you need to do, give it a name at the top. Now I'm gonna call mine the Donna Zoom because it was Donna did it that asked me the question over on Twitter. Now underneath here, you can actually tick all the different things that you want to be available to you as controls within the edit tab. So the ones I recommend ticking in the transform one, this should be the only thing you've got up here. Just tick pivot. You'll see why once we actually get into it on the edit tab. Just minimize transform. Come down to here where you've got animated curves one and expand that. We don't want to be able to change the source. We don't want to change the input, the curve. We do want to change these in and out. So I'm going to tick in and out and out. That one's just named wrong for some reason. So let's just change that to be in and then out. And then we want to be able to change this scale as well. So you can choose how much you zoom in or zoom out when you actually apply the effect. So we're going to tick scale and that's it. And then we're just going to do file, save as. Now you actually need to save this in a very particular folder. I'm going to show you the easiest way to do it. Just find any folder you like. So I'm just going to go straight onto my desktop and we'll save it there for the time being because I know where that is and it's really easy for me to access. So I've got done a zoom, dot settings. I'm going to drop it straight onto my desktop and hit save. Close this box down once you've done, and then still with Infusion, expand the effects library, expand edit templates, and then click on effects. And you should see all these things like binoculars, CCT, all this sort of stuff in here. Just above that, you've got these three little dots. Give that a click and then you can show the folder. And then this folder will open. Now this is the folder you need to put your zoom.settings file into. Copy it straight into there like so. So now I've got this done a zoom, Dot settings. Close all of this and jump out of DaVinci Resolve and then restart it. So here we are, we're back in DaVinci Resolve. We've got an empty project. All I'm gonna do, apply my clip to my timeline like so. And then we can open up the effects library. We can come down to the toolbox, we can go to effects. And then within our fusion effects, we should see our done a zoom or whatever you've called it. So you've got this zoom. We drag that onto our clip. And then if we go to the beginning and hit play, we've got our zoom in. It holds right to the end and then pops out again. And in the joy of this, we can bring this, make this shorter. If we hit play, it pops in and then it pops out again. So it will adjust dynamically to the length of the clip. If you give the clip a click, open up the inspector, go to effects, you've got pivot, you've got your in and out, and then you've got your scale. So what does the pivot do? Well, if we click on this little drop down here underneath your preview window, and we're going to go to the fusion overlay you'll get this little dot here and we can move this around and what this actually means is we can choose the point that we zoom in to so you can see we're zooming in up here if i move this x around we can choose the location that we're actually zooming into so let's say we want this little guy over here to be more of a central point we can just put the point there and zoom in we can change the type of animation. So we've got options to all of these. So let's change it to quad instead and we'll hit play. And there you go, it looks a little bit different. And if we want to zoom in even further, we've got the scale. So we can just drag that. Let's go all the way, something like that. And then we zoom all the way in and all the way out. 
Now there's one last thing to bear in mind. If I haven't made any cuts to the clip which I'm applying the zoom to, all you need to do is just apply the zoom straight to it on your timeline and you'll have no issues at all. It will just work like so. However, if you've made a cut like so, and let's say I've deleted this section, if I try and apply the zoom to this second clip, it won't actually work properly because of the way that the frames work. So what you need to do before you apply the zoom, just right click on the clip, change it to a compound clip, click on create and then apply it and it'll work exactly as expected. And then from here again, you can just change the length of it, move it around, do whatever you want. And you've got this real nice zoom in and zoom out with all of your controls available as well. And there it is. These animation curves are amazing. They're going to really change the way that people like me can create these assets for you guys. As a really good example, I'm currently in the process of changing all of my seamless transitions to use these animation curves, which means if I create a whip pan style transition, you've got the choice of 12 or however many there are different animations to choose from. So you can make it look slightly different depending on the project that you're working on, which is really, really awesome. So if you did enjoy this video, please do give me a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or feedback, slap them down in the comment section below. And if you're new here, you enjoyed this video, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. Thanks ever so much for watching, folks. You take it easy. I'll see you next time. Zoom in. Zoom out. Take it easy. <laughs> see ya. Zoom in. Zoom out. <laughs>